It's not every day I get to make a video about something that interests me from two different directions, but today I'm at the Big Opal where I'm going to have a look at the only scale model of a part of Lightning Ridge that's ever been made. The Big Opal is an underground mine experience in Lightning Ridge and it's home to this scale model of part of Opal Street built by a Lightning Ridge resident in the late 1960s. I spoke with Steve at the Big Opal about the history of this model. The first hardware store that was built in Lightning Ridge was in the 60s and one of the owners put in an Opal shop next door to their hardware store and built this model themselves and put it in their in their opal shop and when they sold out they then sold it to another shop opposite the post office. This is to my knowledge the only scale model of part of Lightning Ridge. As far as I know there's no other model. So here's the thing this model is kind of a big deal to me for a few reasons. First up I love scale models. I've built models of the Space Shuttle and the Millennium Falcon and I absolutely love miniature versions of things. I find models really help me to wrap my head around things and they can be really tangible and comprehensible. It really helps me to understand something if I can see a miniature of it. Secondly, this specific model is one of my oldest memories of Lightning Ridge from when I was very young. Back in 1986, when we first moved to Lightning Ridge, I remember seeing this thing in Bob Bunker's Lightning Ridge Tourist Centre and staring at it for hours. Just for fun, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the model built in the late 1960s and the row of buildings it represents as they stand in 2019. I asked Steve for a quick tour of the model and the buildings that are represented in it. On the left hand end, it was a news agent originally and then became the butcher. The next shop was all part of it. The next one was the bakehouse where they bake bread. Up above was where he lived, which is now a flat and is being rented out. And um, out the back was a huge shed about 30 metres long, 10 metres wide, which is where he baked the bread out the back. It later on became a restaurant. When they turned this into a restaurant, they put the hole on the wall and it was both. So restaurant. that was the nightclub for a while too. So a miner's mate, you name it, it yeah. did everything. Here's a photo of the same building when it was a restaurant and nightclub in the late 1990s. So the mine, which was the name of the shop, then the hardware and the last shop on the right was the um, laundromat. The model was built for the opal shop called The Mine, which is one of the buildings in the model. So the model is actually an example of the Droster effect, which is a form of recursion. The Droster effect is named for a brand of Dutch cocoa, Droster, which features artwork on its packaging that has a picture, smaller picture, of a box of Droster cocoa, which on it has an even smaller picture of a box of Droster cocoa, which must have an even smaller picture of a box of Droster cocoa, etc. ad infinitum. The model mine is similar, at least in concept, because the model of the opal shop should, in theory, contain a model of this very model, which should contain an even smaller model of the model. On and on, into infinity. Of course, I was curious and I had to try to see if there was, in fact, a miniature version of the model visible inside the tiny version of the opal shop. Is there a model of the model in the mine? I don't know. I don't know. I can't see anything in there. But alas, there wasn't a miniature version of the model inside the model. The model does have another feature though that I remember from my childhood, which I asked Steve about. There are lights, I've assumed, but I've never plugged them in. And I have one more personal connection to this diorama that I think is a lot of fun. And if you're familiar with Lightning Ridge Tourism or previous videos on ADU Curiosity, you might have realized it already. In 2009, Sean Galman and I had a photography business specializing in storm and weather photography. It was called Ridge Lightning. And there's a link up there and down there to a previous IDU Curiosity video about that little photography project. Uh, for a while in 2009, we opened an art gallery to display our photographs and our gallery was actually in the shop front that used to be the mine. And that's where this model was originally displayed when it was built. 
The rest of the street scene in the model is also kind of fun, with for some reason the occasional cow, there's a coach delivering tourists to town, and an eclectic collection of vehicles including a weird looking BMW, a strange Tonka truck with a gigantic piece of rough opal in the rear, and this really weird gold vehicle which I've actually identified as a dinky toy of a car from the British TV series UFO. People have wanted to buy the cars out of it, which of course I won't sell. The model maker went to some trouble to include a few generations of mining equipment, including the hand cranked windlass. That's your original way of mining, was to have about 10 buckets down the bottom with a hook on the bottom and then you just bring up one at a time. The motorised hoist. The hoist were invented in the 50s. Uh, which brought the dirt, dirt up. Representations of various methods of cleaning the opal dirt away from the opal itself. This is a dry rumbler. When you didn't have any water, you put your dirt through here and then um, you're able later on to take the, what was left away and wash it because you were short of water. So they started off with dry rumbling and then they went to puddler and then they went to cement mixer. And just when you think the model mine is awesome enough, it has one final amazing feature, a really detailed and pretty accurate underground mining scenario complete with geological strata and key features specific to opal formation. So you've got your faults where the opal often forms. You've got your sandstone, different colored sandstone, and then more sandstone and then more clay level or mud level. Most of your opal is formed near a fault. I'm really impressed with the construction and paintwork on the underground part of the model. The different clay colours are spot on and the amount of information packed into such a small space is really quite amazing. And the building techniques and quality of the details have held up incredibly well in the over half a century since this model was put together. This video was made with the help of Steve at the Big Opal in Lightning Ridge. If you visit Lightning Ridge, you should stop by the Big Opal and check out the Model Mine, a quirky bit of Lightning Ridge community and opal mining history. You can compare the geological information in the model with the actual underground experience at the Big Opal. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to IDU Curiosity on YouTube and hitting the little notification bell and all that stuff. And you can also follow along on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram if you feel so inclined. But most importantly, thank you for watching.